and still can't get over Big White. Big White's a great it's deck not name. not fair. It's a really good deck name. Blue Red Goggles, that's also a great deck name. Well, when you cut Goggles from the deck, then we have to rename the deck. Well, I'm not going to do that. It's the only reason I'm you playing the deck. You the never first. know. You never know as we get right here to watch you James Wager. <laughs> you got to call it something different. If he cuts uh, uh, Absent well, from the deck, it can't be Big White. Sure, he can't. Have what if he's got a bunch of Linvalas? Bigger White. Biggest White. <laughs> Andrew Main, Green White Tokens. It looks like we got a Stasis Snare going to take care of Gideon. All these white cards here for James. That's what his deck is all about. Yeah, I. Um I initially put my prediction for this matchup to be Andrew Main taking it down since he does have a, access to a lot of sweet stuff after board. Uh, Clip Wings in particular I think is great at making sure that he doesn't uh, succumb to you know Archangel Avacyn, uh, even potentially Linvala the Preserver. Uh, right now though, it looks like even though Andrew Main lost the first two games, he's got James uh, Wager down to four life. And looks like he's going to force a game five unless James has something real big here. Yeah, I don't love James's spot right now. Uh, he does have access to the, uh, the the Downton Abbey, as I like to call Down it. Downton Abbey, very nice. Yeah, so Archangel Avacyn there going to just, I guess, block a Gideon? I don't think it has much of a choice. Nope. Yeah, it's on chump block right. duty. We're at two life. I guess chump block duty is not fair because Archangel does get indestructible. So it's going to hang out, that's for sure. I think we have a uh, think we have a declaration to make here. I think uh, Avison is going to hit it. Going to be in going to be in stone. Oh, I didn't even realize we actually even do have a an emblem from a previous Gideon in play. Wow, yeah, okay. hiding under the oath of Nissa there. So it actually goes down to one. Well, now downtown Abbey or Downton. It's Downton. Downton Abbey. Everyone There's calls no it, W. Everyone calls it Downtown Abbey. Yeah, stupid Americans. Yep. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Americans are great. You can't take that back now. <laughs> Downton Abbey cannot be activated as it does cost a life. Mm. What's the FOP going to be? Going to sacrifice a clue? I'm going to go with Oblivion Ring. Still dead. Yeah, still going to need a little bit more than that. Here's a Plains. And that's an Inspector with a clue. Do -do 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 -do. And now, all right. Yep. All right, Declaration of Stone. Oh, never mind. There's an Archangel Avacyn. We're all done here. Andrew Main going to tie things up here against James Wager. Green-white tokens, big white, getting ready here for game number five already then. I can get behind this. Yeah, dude, it's, uh, there's something about game five for me. Like, I, I, I haven't gotten to the, uh, the elimination rounds in, in best of five too often. Three times is, I guess, technically a, a good amount for most players, but... I want to get there every time because it's so much fun. Just the, the stuff you can do in sideboarding is it, you can be tricky. Like with my, with my blue red deck, I have uh, basically a transformational sideboard where I get to like side out all my things in the eye, side out all my Jaces, bring in fevered visions, and just play this like different deck. Yeah. You know, just plays like a completely different deck. And uh, sometimes, you know, your opponent has to respect that and like leave in a bunch of removal spells so they don't lose a Jason thing in the ice and you just have nothing. For yeah, them to we, target. we got to see you do that on day one when you uh, when you played against the white black Eldrazi deck and you just start, you sideboarded into Fever Visions, which was pretty cool. Yeah, it seems like the white black Eldrazi deck is going to have a real hard time beating that. Yeah, I like I like the Fever Visions game plan of your deck. Now for these two players, we take a look at their sideboards here. As Andrew's going to take a moment to get ready here for game number five, we are going to start with James as he'll be on the play. You got two Hidden Dragon Slayers, two Reality Smashers, four Thought Not Seers, two Secure the Waste, two Linval the Preserver, another copy of Gideon, and two Planner Outbursts. So you mentioned game five, a lot of different ways you can sideboard. How the heck do you think James goes here? Yeah, I don't know. I, I actually I, I think I saw a Reality Smasher in his hand uh, last game, and I, I think he actually has to take the control role. Okay. I think Planar Outburst is a big deal. Um, actually, maybe he just can't. I'm just trying to figure out, you know, like uh, a way for... Actually, I think maybe he actually just has to go for the Thought Knots here Reality Smasher plan. It doesn't seem that bad, right? Like, you know, the Clip Wings aren't going to be able to deal with either of those two creatures. And being able to take away their Secure the Waste or their Planeswalker, especially on the play, I think is a huge deal. So, uh, yeah, I, I actually do like the Reality Smashers and Thought Knots here. Dragon Slayer, bad. A lot of your removal cells pretty bad against uh, the Grunoi Tokens deck, since I'm pretty sure that uh, they're just, uh, Andrew Main's going to just board out Hangerback Walker. I think and he then, should. And then all that's left is Thraven Inspector, Elvish Visionary, and then Archangel Avacyn, of course. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, 
I don't know. Maybe you have to respect Archangel Avacyn and just like leave in some copies of Stasis Snare. But I think you can get all the Silk Wraps out. Maybe some of the Declarations out. But Declaration is pretty good against a Secure the Waste as long as they don't untap and kill you with it. So if you get like a, a little bit of breathing room between dying, then Declaration can just clean up all the tokens by itself. So. On Andrew's side, he's got two Den Protectors, two Hidden Dragon Slayers, an Evolutionary Leap, two Silk Wrap, two Clip Wings, three Tremokas Command, a Dragler Tremoka, and then two Serac the Hunt Caller. Is there anything that you feel like he needs for this matchup? Uh, nothing I don't, Nothing really pops out at me other than Clip Wings. Okay. Um, you know, I guess, like, Dromoka's Command could be pretty good at fighting off, like, Silk Wrap and Stasis Snare if his uh, creatures matter like a lot of you know his little his little smaller creatures matter the only thing that he, he would really want to unlock from a stasis nair is the archangel avison uh maybe a gideon i guess if he gets a little frisky and tries to attack with it and it gets stasis nared okay then he could unlock it with that but yeah for the most part i really just like clip wings since the the big white decks uh major sources of attack are archangel of tides as well as archangel avison and then some potential sideboarded linvalas whether or not he goes for the Linval plan is uh, still up in the air. I thought I saw Reality Smasher in his hand last game, which means he probably has thought not Reality Smasher. Definitely both on the draw or on the play, since uh, you can take their Gideon from them and just like threaten to kill Gideon that turn if they go Gideon make a two-two. Okay. Uh, you know, you just take care of the token, then hit the Gideon. Yep. So yeah, uh, I think he uh, he has a few different ways he can go, but mostly I think you just want uh, to make sure you don't lose to the Flyers of Clip Wings. Uh, yeah, uh, I guess Serac could be pretty sweet against attacking an opposing Gideon. Just trying to get it off the battlefield. Yeah. Okay, well, there's the options there for both players. So game number five going to be underway. We've already got one player through to the semifinals. That is Max McVitie with Mono White Humans. He's going to play the winner of this match. So he's either going to be playing against Big White or Green White Token. So we'll see how Mono White Humans does line up against those decks. In the meantime, we're going to very quickly talk about our creature collection, some of the new sleeves and player bundles that we do have available. So there's two things here. We got our good friend, the Slobber and Mild Driver from Game Night April. So we got that in Playmat sleeves Love it. and player bundles. And, you know, you like this one, but I think this is the one everyone really loves. It's the Tigers, Los Tigres. <laughs> in playmat sleeves but and player But Tiger is so much more of a boring name than Slobbering Mile Driver. Oh, we got to work on our names for our little friendly ones. So we got like the kind of the puns, and then we've got kind of just the adorbs ones. Yeah. So Los Totes. Tigre. Yeah, we call him Stripes. Aww. Good old Stripes here hanging out in the water. Aww. What's his brother's name? I can't remember what Craig called or last week. You can actually take this super sinister, and he's just, <laughs> just no, go to sleep. Is he on the Go to sleep, <laughs> little brother. He's on the attack? Yeah. That's what's going on? Yeah. Or that's like a tar pit. You know, just uh, slowly sinking into Is that a creeping tar pit there? We didn't know it? No, it's water. Okay, I, you can I have a feeling. See, you can see him through the water. Can't, can't they saying, just be playing and having fun? They could. Don't we, do we always have to turn it sinister? I do. This is what you and Patrick always do. The hippo should have been attacking people instead of playing in the pool. Maybe. Yeah, they're just friendly animals, part of our creature collection. Go to outsidercitygames.com <laughs> slash creature collection for more information. Jetpack penguin should be like, you know, going to war. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just taking down other penguins, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, squirrels yeah. are stealing things, just all, all the bad stuff. We have good intentions, and then it just turns sinister. Now, keep yeah. in mind, on the other side of our quarterfinal bracket, we are going to have for you guys Logan Myers against Craig Kremples, and that's a Bant Company mirror, so uh, we'll be here for a while. And then Ryan Fleischer playing Bant Company against Jerry Thompson playing White Blue Human. So make sure you stick and stay as we make our way through our elimination rounds, crown our first Invitational Champion of the Year, and send another player to the Player Championship. Been a fun tournament so far. Really big invitational this go around. Yeah, I uh, I, I was doing really well. I uh, started off day one 8 Yeah, you're 8 now. Yeah, got like a thousand people saying congrats. Congrats, you're 8 yep. And I just had to tell every one of them that there's still eight more <laughs> rounds. Yeah. And also, my modern deck is unplayable. <laughs> Why well, was it in fact bad this weekend? It's just always bad. I just always play it because it's there. Like, I have it. And I haven't played that much modern recently. There was, an, you know, a bunch of unbans and some bans. Yeah. And Infect's just like my go-to, you know? It's your it's your, your boo. Tom always wins with it. Not modern. That's actually true. Yeah. No. He, he smashes with it in Legacy. Yeah, I mean, I, I won an open with modern, or with Infect and modern last year, and it just has cursed me. So I, I, just, I just can't, I mean, I, I don't know, I, it just ruined me. Now I don't want to play anything else, but I also hate it. Now, there are times where it looks unbeatable, and there's times where it looks horrible. Yeah, sometimes you just have to keep a hand that's just like Noble Hierarch, Serum Vision's Pump Spells. 
and then you just never draw an infect creature and die. We gotta kill with a noble hierarch, man. You gotta go regular. I do that sometimes. <laughs> it's very difficult. <laughs> Especially if you don't have a berserk. Makes it a little bit more difficult, yeah, I'm no sure. Kidding. We're underway here in game number five. It's a plains here for James. A forest for Andrew. He's got an oath in this, so he'll take a look at the top couple of cards, see if he gets to take one with brick, him. Brick, brick, brick. It is really hard to do that. <laughs> I know. Dude, I've actually seen a surprising number of bricks recently, and pe I think people are just building their deck badly if they ever can miss. I've seen oath I saw oath miss last week. Uh, I've only ever seen ancient stirrings miss once, lifetime. And then, uh, well, Collective Company is always shy on the camera. It is always times finding one or zero. Yeah. Or a bad two. I mean, I don't think there's such thing as a bad two unless it's two Jaces. Two Den Protectors. That's fine. <laughs> just, just start jamming. You just want some two ones? Dude. You can't, beggars can't be choosers. Yeah. Archangel Avison here off the oath of this. Not going to come as a surprise to James once Andrew has five yeah, mana. Dude, you just gave it away. Yep. You just gave him all the information he needed. There's the inspector of planes, and we're going to head back Andrew Main's way. He'll draw a card. See what comes next for him. He does have a Dramokas command in hand. Of course, we know about the Archangel. Den Protector in hand as well. Yeah, I would actually like to see Andrew get a little aggressive here and just play a Den Protector on turn two, it, assuming he has no other play. Uh, you know, it, it, it's not a card that is going to be all that great in the matchup uh, as far as, like, rebuying specific powerful things. A lot of his... Uh, you know, instant sorceries, like he may be able to get back a Secure the Waste or a Declaration of Stone, for example. But uh, all of James Wager's removal, for the most part, is exiling. So he's not going to be able to rebuy other creatures. And getting some pressure into play, uh, it, even just getting on the board, threatening to trade, I think is going to be pretty good. Well, you asked for it, you got it. Dead Protector face up did come down for Andrew Main. For James, he attacked for one with the Inspector. That's why Main's down to 19. Now you see a morph here from Wager, and we go back Andrew Main's way. Third lands of Plains, and now the play. Morph. It is a morph. All right, looks like we got Hidden Dragon Slayer. Hopefully going to keep that uh, Archangel Avacyn in check for James Wager on Andrew Main's side. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm actually kind of scared of this uh, Westvale Abbey on Andrew Main's side that he has in hand alongside a Secure the Waste. So it could be a big surprise. Ooh, no not, longer a surprise. Not a surprise anymore. Never mind. Uh, there is a Thought Knots here. You see the hand here. Archangel Avacyn, a Gideon, Secure the Waste, a Westville Abbey, and a Dramokas Command. Now, we don't have a great look at James's hand, but how do you pick a hole in this hand? I don't know. Um, Gideon, I think, is the most threatening right off the bat, but you do have a couple creatures in play, but at the same time, Andrew Main also has a few creatures in play. So... The, this board looks like it's going to get pretty cluttered. I think the big uh, breakout card for right now is going to be Secure the Waste with the Abbey. Uh, but I think you just have to take Gideon for curve purposes. The Gideon actually could just make the game uh, just like kind of spiral out of control. Gideon is a very powerful card. You see James taking a long look at this one. This is no easy decision here. Now the Morph, again... Going to be a hidden dragon slayer for James. So you think about it, okay, well, he's got Archangel Avison taken care of in theory, though Dramoka's command could kill the morph, so maybe that's not true. But it looks like the selection is going to be Gideon, and that might be because of the curve here from Andrew, as you mentioned. Yeah, I mean, he might just not have a good play here on turn four, and I think that is almost as important as making sure that, you know, your opponent's not able to set up uh, Ormondal. Yep. I believe Ormondal. It is Ormondal. Well done, Mr. Anderson. Yeah. Dude, I, 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 I would just want to say I love... Ooh, it is a Dragon Slayer? I thought it was another Dip Protector. That's gas! <laughs> thought not Seer down. Draw a card. Hidden Dragon Slayer is actually pretty good now. Oh, man. If he had hit... Uh, okay. That's not bad. Inspector. No, that, that, that's good. Well, he ended up drawing a Gideon off of the uh, yeah. off of the Thought Knots here dying, so that's not bad. I, I so for like two seconds I forgot he'd already played his land for the turn, and I was like, if he hits a land, he can go Dramoko's command too. But no, not that good. Here comes Den Protector. Doesn't look like James has any interest in blocking, so two damage will come across. Yeah, I would have smashed for that Dragon Slayer too. I think. Uh, I mean, you have Archangel Avison in hand. You'd want your opponent to trade their Dragon Slayer for yours. I think the thing he's trying to do is to get a lot of value out of his Dramoko's command, but I don't think. You need to. At some point, it's just going to do something great. Here come the beatdowns. Morph Mania. Maybe yes. a block? I would just snap trade. Oh, he has Archangel Avacyn, though, so he can't trade. Yep, all right. So we just have to take the chunk. The threat of Archangel Avacyn is almost as good as the card itself. Bluffing it, a big deal. Yeah. 
this is something that people are going to get used to in the standard format. I know we're only in week two, but uh, Archangel Everson is so good. You're going to play against it so much that we're going to see a lot of people bluff it when they don't have it. Yeah, um, imagine a deck, just if you will, that is able to stabilize. I, I don't know how you stabilize, but when once they hit five mana, they have access to Secure the Waste, Ojitize Command, Archangel Avacyn. Just those three cards alone. I'm interested. That is terrifying. Yeah, I'm interested. That's like playing against Mistbind Click Fairies. <laughs> it's sort of like that. I mean, not quite, obviously. Yeah. And, and like Fairies obviously had a lot of ways to interact with the opponent and, and whatnot. But I'm just saying, like, it is it's terrifying. That's going like, to be unpleasant. That's for sure. People haven't really found a good way to leverage the the flash ability, I guess, uh, to, to make people kind of choose which side of the road they want to go down. Like, you know, if, if you have uh, an Archangel Avacyn, uh Usually you're just going to cast it is at some point, like, at, when you have five mana open just to get a, bo a body into play to start smashing. Yeah. Um, here it's a little different for Andrew Main because uh, very likely that the uh, morph on the other side of the table is a hidden dragon slayer. So can't really play that now. But in general, if you're able to threaten Secure the Waste or Archangel Avacyn, it's very good for you. Like, it's real bad for your opponent if you're able to threaten both. So uh, Andrew Main here doing exactly that with his deck, which I think is is pretty sweet. If he draws a land, he can actually go in a turn secure here for four, and then get Ormondal online if he draws a land. If he yeah, if he wants to make that move, that's a good move. Yeah, it's I the think only, it's, I th it's the only move I got. I think he might be thinking about making that move. Now you saw James just played Archangel Tides, which yeah. is obviously a good Magic card. So that's his turn with just the one mana available. Actually, uh, from Andrew's side, actually, since he he tapped low for the uh, the the Ar Archangel of Ties, if he instead just goes Avacyn, untap Dramoka's command, I think he's in phenomenal shape to just close the game. Except that James has uh, Planar Outburst in hand. So maybe he's trying to walk him into this. Yeah, just walking the dog. All right. Well, there's the Archangel Avacyn. Now James will draw. So maybe this Archangel of Tithe, it's all ruse. He wants him to kill this. So what we could do if we want to be a little tricky, uh, assuming optimal play without knowledge that your opponent has a planar outburst, I like attacking with just Avacyn, paying one. If your opponent blocks, you go Dramogus Fan, put a counter on your Avacyn, and then have, uh, I don't know, the Hidden Dragon Slayer fight? Okay. Maybe? Maybe not. Maybe you just, uh, okay, Declaration Stone's pretty good here, too. Dramoka's Command here, putting a counter, fighting the morph, and then just attacking with all the creatures is not bad. Unfortunately for Andrew Main, that Planar Outburst from James is going to be a pretty big deal next turn. Yeah, he's got this thing kind of rolled up. Now we might actually see Dramoka's Command now, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So here's Hidden Dragon Slayer. We are going to gain a lot of life, and we still have Secure the Waste and Gideon Ormondal on backup. So the Planar Outburst is not going to be lights out, and he's going to hit him for a giant chunk of damage. So he could get him to a spot where Orm Ormondal won, like one Ormondal is lethal. Okay. And the Spectre's going to block the Hidden Dragon Slayer. As you mentioned, Andrew's going to gain a bunch of life. A bunch of damage is going to come across to James. And now he's going to untap at 12. I think we're going to see him clear up the battlefield. Pa! Here. Everything's gone. Planar yeah. Outburst. Pa! Are you saying pow? That's that, that's bah! you. That's that's you. I think. <laughs> that's not me. To Andrew, we're gonna go. He's gonna draw a card again. We know that he's got the Westfall Abbey on the battlefield. Secure the waste Gideon in hand, and he just drew a forest. Well, he can just threaten Normandal next turn. But I think Gideon here is a safer play. Okay. Uh, you just start, you know, building the incremental before you go for the big blowout. Think. Oh no, he has a. <laughs> yeah. All right, Twitter, don't blow up at this guy. <laughs> he has an oath of Nissa hiding under the, the clue. Just FYI. It's true. This guy, this guy. Good old Andrew Maine. He's getting tricky with the mana thanks to the oath of Nissa. <laughs> we started doing the versus videos right when uh, Oath of the Gatewatch first came out. That was like the thing that Tom always did was just like tapping all the weird lands to cast the Planeswalkers off Oath of Nyssa for no reason. Yeah. Like he, he like would tap out every turn and cast like two Planeswalkers like innocuously. For, yeah. For <laughs> How'd you do that? Just trust me, it's fine. Yeah, no, it's good. It's fine. It's good. Can't be Vista enters the battlefield on tap because of all those basics out there for Andrew Maine. 
Now will Gideon fire up and maybe crank out another token? Because James Waker did just leave up seven mana, and I'm sorry, I don't believe he's got nothing to do. No, he's he's definitely got something. Whether that is the uh, the the two secures out of the sideboard or an Archangel Avacyn is uh, not entirely clear. Um, Gideon here can tick up and attack and protect itself from uh, the Archangel's first attack, even though you don't get any damage in if it blocks due to Indestructible. He's going Emblem. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, Secure the Waste. Yeah. Oh, this is gas. This is way better than what I would have done. <laughs> you don't like the Ormondal plan anymore, huh? Here's Archangel Avacyn. I mean, you can do both. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Kalo no Dos. James will draw. He's found an Eldrazi Displacer. There's a Foundry of the Councils. Yeah, and we have uh, a Linvala here to, to get a little bit of a life buffer, which I, I like. Uh, we also have the potential to go Displacer and Blink, uh, one of the tokens. Uh, probably going to be the slightly bigger token, if I had to guess. Uh, as well as just like being able to block something. So secure here. Uh, Displacer, importantly, also bricks Ormondal, because yep. it'll just flip it back into Westvale Abbey. But we do get six 2-2 two -two creatures here. I believe they are warriors. They are warriors. And they're coming out to play. See? Another great uh, that one. Yeah. That one yeah. plays. That one plays. I'm gonna let that one play. All right. That's good. Deal. They're two twos mm. along with that night ally. That's a three three. This is actually kind of a weird spot here. So, the displacer is, uh, yeah. So we're gonna play Ocean Visionary, but in hand we have a Dramoka's command. Oh, we drew another secure too. I'm saying we because I'm sitting on the right hand side of the booth <laughs> and and I'm just so invested because I picked Andrew to win. Ah right. See it always right? comes down to this. Right. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna blink out that token. We're gonna deal him eight damage. So James is gonna fall down to four. Yeah, that's a million. And we can still secure for four more. Yep. These secures are looking pretty good. Yeah, you can't bring out the visionary that's out there too. Yeah, we could have been a little more aggressive and played Dramoka's command to try to just get the uh, the Displacer out of there. Of course, he could have blinked the Avacyn, but that would have left him dead yeah. on board. Yep. So, I like oh, playing Oh, wait, no, no, no. I'm, I'm dumb. He could have just blinked the token you tried to fight with. Never mind. Yeah, if he makes a move. Beep boop. Linvala. Yep, go up to nine. I believe you gain five life. Yeah, you gain five, and he's going to get an angel. Yeah, that's pretty good. Now, the question is, does James have another land? Because then he can start blinking Linvala. <laughs> that's kind of interesting. Yeah, I don't believe he does unless it's just a colorless land. Um, otherwise, he would have like left another colorless land untapped and then played a land from hand. But yeah, this is it's starting to get a little tough here for Andrew. So we're waiting on the angel, I believe. Yeah, we're waiting and, on the angel uh, token. We're gonna go to nine. We get to make four more creatures. That gives us nine total two twos versus four blockers. What's that leave? Five creatures getting through, I, I believe. I, that leaves five. I two, believe. Two I believe that's through. five two two creatures getting through. Yeah. Five times two. That's I ten. Don't know about you. That's no. Oh no. Nope. Nope. Oh no, that's only ten. Yeah, that's ten. That's not twenty two. That's not twenty two. It's a lot though. It is a lot of damage. More warriors coming out to play. Yep. And uh, if I had to look at James's deck list, I would guess that there's nothing that can keep him from dying here with only two planes untapped. At nine life. Maybe. Unless Andrew tries to go for Ormondal for no reason. Yes. Then, yeah. And also Dramoka's command, Clara Blocker, and he just drew a Gideon. So oh, wait. Oh, wait. I think uh, I think we're going in easy mode. Oh, and he's going to Tom Ross the tapping. <laughs> <laughs> Three fourths of Ormondal. There's Gideon. How did he do it? That's going to do it. Oath of Nyssa powers up a Gideon to make another emblem. And Andrew Maine's going to win this match here yeah. over James Wager. Three games to two. Green white tokens will take care of big white for Andrew Maine. He's going to be going up against Max McVitie in his mono white humans deck in our semifinals. But that is going to be coming up a little bit later as we got to get ready for our other quarterfinals.